Hello and welcome to this video on improper solutions in structural equation modeling. My name is Christian Geiser. On this channel, I present weekly statistics tutorials usually related to structural equation modeling, latent class analysis, or multi-level analysis. If this is something that interests you, then please subscribe to this channel. Also, don't forget to hit the like button in case you like this video. Oftentimes, I get the question from people about what they should do when they get a so-called improper solution in structural equation models or confirmatory factor analysis. This is also often referred to as a Haywood case, and it's usually associated with a negative variance estimate, either in terms of negative error variances in a measurement model or negative residual variances or variances in the latent variable model. Sometimes also improper solutions can be indicated by a correlation estimate between latent variables that is out of bounds, that is outside of the admissible range of uh, possible values for correlation. So for example, if you find that a correlation is 1.2 between two latent variables, then obviously something went wrong and this is not a proper solution. So what should you do about it? In this video, I want to talk a little bit more about um, what I think the typical causes are of such improper solutions and what you can do about it. I have another video where I show more technically how you can detect such a problem in the M plus software. And so in this video here, I want to focus more on the substantive issues and give you some tips for what you can do about this problem and how this should be interpreted. I'm going to show you a quick example here in the M plus software. This is a data example taken from this um, publication here by Johnson and uh, Wichern, 1998, Applied Multivariate Statistical Data Analysis. In that book, you find this correlation matrix that I'm analyzing here that results in an improper solution. So I input this correlation matrix into M plus as summary data. It's in this text file improper.txt and the type is correlation. You can see the sample size here um, that I picked is 1000. So it's definitely a substantial sample size. And I fit a single factor model to these three variables y1 through y3 for which the correlations are given. You can see that the input reading in M plus terminated normally, so there was not a syntax error. But then when you scroll down, you can see you get this warning message, even though M plus says the model estimation terminated normally, that's not really true, because there was this um, unnormal or um, not a proper residual covariance matrix theta. So that's the error message that you get in M plus when you have a negative error variance in your model, meaning in the measurement model, one of the residual variances is um, zero or negative. And so then the residual covariance matrix is not positive definite. And M plus tells you this here with this warning message. You can see the problem when you go down to the estimate section, the model results section, you can see under residual variances here that Y1, the first indicator, has a negative error variance. You can also see in the standardized solution that the standardized loading for the first indicator is 1.255, which is in this model an impossible value for a standardized loading because there's only one loading. And so this loading indicates the correlation between the factor and the variable. And so when this correlation then is 1.255 between the variable and the factor, that's not possible. So this correlation would be above um, the admissible value. In other models, there can be standardized coefficients that can be above one. That can happen in certain models. And I have a separate video on that topic if you're interested. But in this simple structure factor model where each variable loads only onto one factor, um, standardized coefficients above one are not allowed, are not proper. Furthermore, you can also see this from the residual variances, the standardized ones here that again, there's this negative standardized residual variance, which is not a possible value, not interpretable. And then also the R squared is undefined. The R squared in this model is the standardized loading squared. 
And so that would also then mean that if you square this loading of 1.255 for this first variable, then you get an R squared above 1, which is undefined. And so M plus then um, prints this here as undefined. And so there are multiple ways so in which you can see this. So make sure you don't overlook the warning message first of all. And then next, make sure you look at all your parameter estimates for every model to be sure that there isn't an estimate that looks improper. So now here clearly we have an improper solution, even though this is a saturated model. You can see that from the chi-square test of model fit above here uh, in the model fit um, information section, you can see this model has zero degrees of freedom, so it's just identified or saturated. I also have a video on that topic, what that means. Essentially, it means that this model should reproduce the data perfectly. However, in this case, it does it with parameter estimates that are out of bounds. And so that could be weird, so say, to understand, because you would think, well, this model should fit perfectly by definition, a single factor model with um, free loadings for three indicators is always saturated, is always just identified. So why does this model result in an improper solution, even though it must fit the data perfectly? Now, this problem can occur both for saturated models, like here, or also for over-identified, non-saturated models with positive degrees of freedom. And it's not, so say, an issue that is related to that. So even for a model that fits perfectly or a model that fits very well, you can find a, an improper solution like that. And in fact, it actually is relatively common to see such a problem when you overfit a model. So when you have a model that is over-identified, but you have many parameters in the model, then, then we see this more frequently when you, or, or I've, at least in my experience, you can see this more often because then oftentimes the model is over-parameterized and that can be a reason for this problem. Now let's take a look at the correlation matrix here from that publication that they generated to um, uh, show what an improper solution could look like or how this, what kind of correlation matrix can result in such a problem to understand better what's actually going on. And so here you can see that we have correlations between the first indicator and the second indicator and the third indicator that are rather high. So the first two variables are correlated 0.9 and then the first and the third variable are correlated 0.7. So those are strong correlations which are desirable for a measurement model, for a unidimensional model where these indicators are supposed to measure the same factor. So they're not outside of the range of what we would like to see. They're actually in a range that is desirable because it indicates these correlations are, these variables are measuring the same construct. They're strongly correlated. They're homogenous. They're reliable, so to say. And so that's all positive. The problem here is that the second and the third variable are actually correlated a lot lower. This is only 0.4, this correlation. And so that creates an inhomogeneity in the correlation pattern that is at odds with the idea of a unidimensional factor model where all three indicators are exchangeable or interchangeable indicators of the same latent variable. That's not plausible <clears throat> because that correlation here is so much lower. So that would then indicate that um, the one variable is less reliable, measure that it has a lot more error. And so that causes trouble. You probably wouldn't have a lot of trouble if this correlation here were 0.8 instead of 0.4. So then probably this issue wouldn't occur. And so this is actually <clears throat> a very frequent reason for improper solutions are improper measurement models or meaning indicators that are not in line with a unidimensional factor model where the correlations are so different between the indicators, maybe because the indicators are measuring other factors. They're not exactly measuring the same unidimensional construct. And so then when you put them on the same factor, then you can get these problems. So in summary, the most important issue to think about when you have an improper solution is model misspecification, meaning this model here isn't right for the data. 
these three indicators aren't unidimensional indicators of the same latent variable, that's why you have the problem. Also, misspecification could be that you over-parameterize your model, that you have too many factors in your model that are where some of them aren't needed, aren't required, and that that causes um, problems in the estimation. Likewise, also underspecification can cause this problem when you don't have enough factors, for example, or not enough parameters to fit your data properly. And this, in my experience, is the most common issue with improper solutions. The most common cause for that problem is that you have some sort of model misspecification. Something is wrong with the model for the given set of indicators. And so that is really something that you should think about, that you should look into, look at the correlation matrix and um, think about whether the correlation matrix and or covariance matrix is in line with your model assumptions. And then often you'll find that the correlation pattern is not in line with what you specified in terms of the model. The model cannot reproduce those correlations properly and therefore it resorts to an improper estimate to try to fit what it can't fit under the assumptions of the model or the implications of the model. And this is the most common problem. Almost always when you have this problem, there's something wrong with the model. Now, there are also other potential reasons, though, that you should think about. Sometimes the model really isn't problematic. The model is correct or approximately correct for the data, and you still get an improper solution. And that can be, for example, due to a very small sample. So when you have a very small sample size, sampling error is magnified. You have more um, random fluctuations in your data because um, of the small sample. And then that, that problem can happen, even though the error variance in the population is non-negative, is positive, but in your sample, due to sampling error, it exceeds um, the range of possible values or goes below zero simply because of sampling error. Then in that situation, the only solution really to this problem would be to increase the sample size, add more cases, and then see if you get a proper estimate. Also, um, what can happen sometimes is even though you have a sufficiently large sample, you just are unlucky, so to say. You're unlucky and sampling error kicks your error variance towards um, a, a negative value simply because you have maybe very reliable variables. So let's say you have good indicators, they're very reliable, they're very strongly correlated, and then the, the loadings, the standardized loadings, are so close to one that due to sampling error, your uh, standardized loading exceeds one, your, um, standard, your residual variance becomes negative, and it's just simply bad luck. And so then in that case, what you could do potentially is think about what is a reasonable value in theory for the, um, st for the error variance. So, and then you could fix the error variance to a positive value that is reasonable given the expected reliability of the variable. And there are formulas in classical test theory that allow you to infer from the reliability and the variance of the variable a proper estimate for the error variance that you can then fix um, in your input file a priori. But for example, maybe from the literature, you know that this variable has a reliability of 0.95, which is very high. You know the variable's variance, and then you can use these two values to estimate the error variance manually through a computational formula, and then you can fix it so that the value will be positive. And that could be reasonable to do. Now, what some people do, what I don't think is reasonable, is that they will simply fix an error variance to zero when they get a negative variance estimate. And that is something that I don't think is reasonable because it's not logical, it's not meaningful for a variable to have a reliability of 1.0, which is associated with um, or which is the implication of having an error variance that is zero. When you set the error variance to zero, then automatically this means you're assuming this variable has perfect reliability of 1.0, and that is not something that is plausible for most variables in the social and behavioral sciences. It's not plausible that test scores or questionnaire scores are perfectly reliable for people. There's always some amount of measurement error, and so fixing it to zero then, in my opinion, 
doesn't solve the problem then probably results in some other issues with the model. It is more reasonable to think about what a meaningful positive value, non-zero value is for an error variance based on prior information about variables reliability. So maybe you can obtain a reliability estimate for the variable based on your data and then you can set that to this value, which I personally find more reasonable than and more defensible than setting an error variance to zero. So those are pretty much the reasons for negative error variances when you have sampling error, when you have model misspecification, when you simply get unlucky with your estimate, when you have very reliable variables. And so those are the things to think about in that case. I hope you found this video useful to deal with this kind of problem in um, programs such as M plus or other programs. And please don't forget to subscribe to this channel, hit the like button, leave a comment in the comment section if you have any comments on this topic. And I'll see you next time.